Wolverines get back on track with a big win over Notre Dame. We'll have the highlight. The Big Ten season looms ahead, so we'll take a closer look at Michigan's conference challenges. And we'll scout the league opener as we look at the Nittany Lions of Penn State. All that and more coming up next. Michigan Replay with Lloyd Carr is brought to you in part by Pepsi, more happy, by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA, by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, Gatorade, is it in you? By the University of Michigan Health System, working together, that's the Michigan difference. By Big Boy Restaurant, Big Boy, it's a Michigan thing. And by TCF Bank, for all your banking needs, all you need is a little TCF. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Michigan Replay. Well, this week, a little bit better. Saturday, the Wolverines beat Notre Dame 38 to nothing. Coach Carr, that's a little more like it. You followed my advice, finally. Well, when you coach and play in this game, uh, this Michigan-Notre Dame series long enough, a lot of things can happen, and uh, a lot of good things happened for us yesterday. But I'll tell you this. Um, after all that had happened the first two weeks and everything that had been heaped on this team, I thought, they came out and played with a great purpose, and I thought that it showed their character, their poise, and the, the, to the togetherness they had under the circumstance. Well, you have to, the only chance you have when you're, when you're fighting an uphill battle and confidence and criticism, all those things, is uh, to stick together. That's really what Michigan football has always been about, Jim, about being a great uh, team. But I want to get to the, the kids are very important, but it's the coaches, too. You guys have to instill that confidence and keep saying, you guys, let's, let's get forward, keep working, we're going to get out of this. And that's a thing coaches have to do also. Well, there's no question, I mean, you, because they're looking to you. And, exactly. And, and what you have to do is uh, stay firm in what you believe uh, and, and convince those guys that they're good enough, they can do it, they just have to improve in certain areas and do the things that they know how to do. Well, you and the staff did an outstanding job this past week. Is we had a great opening with a great day. How about oh, those F-16s oh and the goodness. flyover? Hey, what a powerful thing that was. Absolutely, and what a powerful first snap. They snap it over the head of the quarterback, and you get great field position to open. Well, you know, that's, uh, that, that was a great break for us. And, you know, one of the things that we had talked about all week long is trying to establish a running game establish control of the line of scrimmage. We uh, had a mix-up down there, but uh, Jason Gingell, good field goal protection, kicked uh, a three, uh, a field goal and got us on the board. But the other thing you talked about with a freshman quarterback, and you knew they were going to try it with you, is put pressure on it. Well, that's exactly what you'd like to do. And, uh, Donovan Warren comes off the corner there and knocks the ball loose and uh, finds a way to still get off the ground and recover the ball. And you get it done on the ground, which was your game plan. Well, we're running there behind Jake Long and Adam Krause and uh, Mike Massey and uh, this Kirk, uh, Mark Mondros, his brothers, Kirk played for us. But those guys did a great job there on the left side. Get you a 10-0 lead, and here comes the pressure again. Well, you see great pressure there from Tim Jamison. I thought uh, Will Johnson was really active. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, Terrence, I think, had his best game. Here, one of the biggest hits, maybe the biggest hit of this entire season, a great uh, tackle and, and knocking the ball loose, Chris Graham. And we get a turnover that really gives us great field position. Well, you emphasized tackling all week. Well, we did, uh, Jim. And, you know, we kept the ball inside. So, you know, I heard a lot of things about we were, we're slow. We're not a slow team, but... You look slow when you let the ball outside the defense. And, and here's just Mike Hart doing his magic. Well, you saw Ryan Mallett uh, make a play that uh, most times he's not going to get away with, but uh, Mario made a wonderful catch. And then, uh, again, Mike Hart finds uh, the scene. And it, it took a while to develop, but he got it done. And here's the pressure again. You just really control the offensive line. And then... They go back to throw, and you create the turnover, and this is some of the things that have been missing the first couple of weeks. Well, there isn't any question here. We're uh, bringing some pressure here. John Thompson, I think, 
uh, without question, had his best game uh, at Michigan. Uh, came up with uh, some great plays in the open field here. Uh, another big interception. And our offense had the benefit of great field position again. And again, the running game, in my judgment in this game, really set up the pass, didn't it? Well, you know, Jim, what it does is it, yeah, there's no question it makes it easier uh, to, to uh, protect the quarterback here. Uh, Greg Matthews comes open on a zone blitz by Notre Dame and uh, hits the open space. And uh, now we've, re we've taken control of the game. 24 nothing at that point. Here's one of the key plays in the game. Third and one. Late in the half, and you stuff him. Well, Brandon Graham there, and again, uh, Terrence Taylor. But Brandon, I think, had his best game. Uh, he had a great week of practice. And, uh, of course, uh, Sean Crable, uh, I think, is really uh, stepping up as a leader on this football team. And you get Brandon Miner in the mix also here as the running game continues to work. Well, you know, you can if you can run the football, you can use the clock. and. Uh, we're not where we need to be, but we did uh, absolutely make some strides because we didn't turn the football over uh, running the football. And then you get into the end zone through the air, but again, it was the run that set all this up. Well, it's an excellent throw here. Uh, good concentration. Adrian uh, got a guy beneath between him and the ball, and uh, Ryan made a, a wonderful throw. and. A good score, third, third down there. Yeah, 31 to nothing at halftime. Now you go off. No coach, I think, in a Notre Dame-Michigan game can anticipate this kind of score at this point. What are you thinking going in at half? Well, if he does, he's dreaming. Because <laughs> it just, he's dreaming it, or drinking. It just <laughs> doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't happen. But, um, you know, I think the biggest thing, you know, I tried to say is, look, um, what we've done here is we've really tackled well because we've leveraged the football. We've kept the ball in front of us. We've run the football, done a good job in the kicking game now. Uh, but we're halfway through this game. we got control. Let's don't lose control by giving up big plays, fumbling the ball, all that. Type all of right. Thing. When we come back, the Wolverines took Coach Carr's advice. When we come back, we'll see the second half. But first, we hear from Brandon Graham, who says defensive coordinator Ron English got his message across this week. He had us doing tackling drills every play. Every play, it was fun, you know, and it was like, it wasn't more, he was punishing us, he was just trying to get us better. And that's what we looked at. We was just like trying to get better, you know, and we going to listen to you all the way. And we can't go wrong. Inside the locker room. We knew we had to protect him, and I think we did a good job of that all day. And, uh, you know, we just came out, we, we executed, and we didn't make stupid mistakes like we have the last few weeks, and it worked out. Uh. Wolverines had a huge lead at halftime over Notre Dame. And you said one of the things you wanted to do was come out in the second half and maintain that intensity. It took a little while, I think, but, but you regained control of that game probably five minutes in. Well, our first drive didn't go well. Our, our, then our defense got the ball back for us. Here's great. Here you talk about pursuit. We kept the ball inside, and uh, we get a play. Will Johnson makes a play on a pass play in the flat. Here, Brandon Engelman, uh, who's really been one of our best football players this fall. He's having a wonderful year. But the thing is, is you've got pursuit. You've got guys to the football. It's obvious that this week in practice, every one of those kids worked hard at getting those lessons corrected. Well, Jim, you know, we're playing on offense. One of the advantages we had is, is Notre Dame's offense a lot like ours. So there is a similarity there, but the fundamentals don't change. And, we certainly uh, took some of the things that we worked on in practice to the field. And, and this drive where you score is all on the ground except the last play. And I think that, again, shows the game plan and how it works. You force Notre Dame to move up, stop the run, and then that puts your skill guys out there in the secondary in one-on-one -on -one cup. Yeah, well, Brandon Miner got a lot of really good work today. And here, uh, Ryan makes uh, uh, Mario made a wonderful move on the defender. Uh, to beat him deep, and, and Ryan got the ball to him. And really now, uh, we're in control of this game. We've got an opportunity to play some of our younger players. Right. Well, the thing is, you got a 38 to nothing lead, and really the defense takes over for the rest of the game. Well, they did. And uh, uh, again, we got a lot of young offensive linemen a chance to play. We got some uh, backs a chance to play, and a lot of young defensive players. So uh, it was really a day where 
you know, from a morale standpoint, we got to win. We got to win over one of our great rivals, and we played well. We got a lot of guys a chance to play, so uh, it's something to build on. And this is an interception you're glad to see, right? Well, Steve Brown is one of these young kids that uh, uh, really, in this play here, he got back, read the safety, made a nice interception. Uh, it's going to be great for his confidence going forward. And the final 38 to nothing again. Nice victory. And the thing we've stayed away from a little bit, which was the huge story coming into the game, was these two freshman quarterbacks meeting each other. Ryan Mallett, uh, your estimation on how he played? I thought he was uh, very good and managed <coughs> the game well. Well, Jim, you know, there's always things from a coaching standpoint. Ryan will uh, look at the film. Scott Leffler will critique him. And th there's a lot of things in there that he can do better. But if you take... Uh, the fact that he's 18 years old and he's starting his first college game and it's Notre Dame national television. <laughs> you know, I think um, it's certainly an unforgettable experience for him. But what I liked is that he, he had great poise and, you know, he did the things that, that we asked him to do to help us win. He made some throws, but he got us in the right place. So I would say it was a good day for him. The, the key, though, too, is is that your control of the line of scrimmage, both e offensively and defensively, was the whole way that game changed, was the whole, that you hung the game on that play. There's no question. The other thing is that offensively, we had great field position. You know, there's a lot of times where uh, games are tight. You've got to go 80 yards well, instead of 50. Look there's at what Notre Dame had to yeah. go over go on Saturday. There, there's no question. And... You know, I think uh, Jimmy Clausen is going to be an outstanding quarterback. You know, these kids um, today, uh, Ryan had, you know, I think great uh, people around him who really um, helped him execute his position because he had great protection. Our receivers got open, so, um, but it was a team win. I mean, that's, that's the bottom line. He helped us win. That's right, and that's what it's all about, the team. Uh, when we come back, we'll look ahead as we scout the Big Ten season. It opens next week. But first, we hear from quarterback Ryan Millett, Mallett, who says, boy, a week makes a big difference. Last week and this week, a whole, you know, a different situation. I came in when we were 25 down, and, you know, I tried to, to bring us back a little bit, but that didn't work. And then this week, we just started off. So, I mean, we, we were just having fun out there. That's all I could really say. Now, the Pontiac performance play of the game. The third down and 11 out of the gun. Mallet has a blitz coming, has a crossing route to Matthews, wide open, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Greg Matthews, 26 yards, how about Ryan Mallet, so cool, under the pressure of the blitz. Coming week, and it shapes up to be a tough road for any team to get to the title. The reason is simple. Nine of the 11 Big Ten teams returned more than half of their starters from a year ago. The only two teams in the conference Michigan won't meet this season are Indiana and Iowa, which puts Illinois and Purdue back on the schedule in 2007 for the Wolverines. Purdue will provide a stiff test with an offense that features a high-powered passing game with last season's leading quarterback for aerial yardage in Curtis Painter, and he's got a great receiver in Dorian Bryant that will be a big challenge for any defense. While the fighting Illini will be young, they also feature a budding star quarterback in Juice Williams, and the Wolverines must face Illinois at night on the road. Besides Purdue at home, the Wolverines will entertain Minnesota, Penn State, and Ohio State. The Golden Gophers will feature a new coach in Tim Brewster from the Denver Broncos of the NFL, and a reworked offense. But they'll have plenty of weapons with the likes of running back Amir Phoenix and speedy wide receiver Ernie Wheelwright. The Buckeyes will close the season in Ann Arbor as usual, and while they lost some big guns to the NFL, they still have a defense led by linebacker James Laurinaitis and defensive lineman Vernon Golston. On offense, running back Chris Wells will be the key figure for the Buckeyes. On the road, Michigan must travel to Northwestern, which is always a tough place to play, and the Wildcats will again feature an explosive offense. Quarterback C.J. Bechet will be at the helm of a spread attack and running back Terrell Sutton will bring two straight thousand yard seasons with him to the party. The toughest part of the Wolverines conference schedule may be the beginning of November when the Wolverines go to Michigan State and Wisconsin on back to back Saturdays. The Spartans feature new coach Mark D'Antonio and a new offense that will place more emphasis on the running game. And with backs like J. Hugh Culprit, 
and Javon Ringer, the change may fit MSU to a tee. Wisconsin's challenge will be a defense that may be the league's best. Last year, they were second in the nation in points allowed, and the nucleus of that group is back, including linebacker Jonathan Casillas, who gives the Badgers speed. On offense, expect a lot of power running, and why not, with the league's rushing yardage leader in B.J. Hill returning for his sophomore season. It's a long, tough road, but what would you expect? It's Big Ten football. And uh, part of the deal about Big Ten is we head toward the Big Ten season, and we'll scout Penn State who is Michigan's opener in our next segment. But it's the teams you play and don't play, and you do not play Indiana or Iowa this year, and that means they don't play you, and they also don't play Ohio State. Well, you know, Jim, every year, every two years, you change the, the schedule, and uh, there's always, you know, it's interesting. You always look at the preseason. You look at the schedule, and you say, oh, this team. You know, but the truth is, it works out over a number of years, and uh, the one thing I think we all know, it's competitive, it's hard to win on the road, and every week you're going to get somebody giving you a shot. You better be ready to play. Right, and that's the thing I think that's key in the Big Ten. It's just you got to look week to week. You, you can't look beyond that to get anybody else, can you? No, I mean, these, these rivalries, this conference goes back you know, a hundred years. Before and, you and I. Well, yeah. That's yeah, old. That's old. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, you know, it's, that's what makes it fun. Yeah, it does. And it starts in a big way. Wolverines will entertain Penn State next week. But we've got to scout the Nittany Lions. But first, we hear from Mike Hart, who says Penn State's going to be a huge test. Great team. It's probably going to be the best defense we see all year. You know, they're one of the best defenses we saw last year. They got a lot of guys returning. Great linebackers. Always have a great linebackers. They have a great defensive coordinator. They had a great scheme against us last year, so we're looking forward to it. To get in the field room, study them a lot, and get, get, and get after them. The locker room. Tomorrow we just go watch this game, get in the film room, and then break down Penn State and go and go into practice next week and go out and give it 110% again and come out with a victory, hopefully. Well, the Big Ten Wars open up, and of course the Wolverines entertain Penn State. Now, Coach, Penn State comes in as a nationally ranked team, unbeaten, and maybe as good a defense as you might see, do you think? Jim, uh, we've been playing Penn State now for 15 years. Uh, what I've seen is uh, it's as good a defense as they've had uh, or at least one of the best they've had in the last 15 and, and, years. And, and you like and have great respect for Joe Pott, don't you? Well, yeah, he's a, I love the guy. I think we all do we respect him. And of course, uh, Ron Vander Lennon, who used to be uh, on the staff here as a graduate assistant back in the early 80s, is on the defensive staff. So they know Michigan, and uh, Tom Bradley, their defensive coordinator, has uh, done a great job. So uh, it'll be a foot. It'll be a great football game. Uh, Morelli, their quarterback, Austin Scott, running back, and, and this guy's their dangerous guy, isn't he? Well, he's a receiver that can make a lot of plays. He's tough, great kick returner, and they've got real speed at the skill position. Their secondary runs extremely well. The receivers run well, and Morelli has uh, got a great arm. Defensively, uh, this is their strength. Maurice Evans, Dan Conner, as good a linebacker as there is. And safety, Anthony Scarano. Well, and, and they rotate a lot of guys up front. They're a very, very physical front, uh, very athletic, very talented. Linebackers that really uh, run to the football, make big plays. Yeah, I think it's, it's an outstanding uh, football team. One of the things about their offense is they've got a, a number of backs that can get you. Rodney Kinlaw, as a matter of fact, on Saturday, took over and had – you know, over 100 yards, 23 carries. So you can't focus on one guy. Their well, skill people really give you a problem. No question. He and Scott uh, both have, uh, I think, uh, Scott has 48 carries. Ken Law has 40. So they've, they've got a, two guys that they can count on. Defensively, they're not going to give you anything deep. They're going to have eight guys up there. So they make it hard to run the football, hard to get big plays. That That's, again, and we, again, we go back to – your situation with a freshman quarterback, one game under his belt. Clearly, that's an advantage for, for Ryan Mallett. But you must run the ball, right? Well, I think you have to do both. Uh, you know, one of the things I liked uh, was the fact that Ryan did get us in the right place. We've got a lot of things we can work on, we need to work on. 
But uh, you've got to be able to throw the football because Penn State is going to put eight guys up there, and you can't block all of them. So you have to uh, be able to do both. And, uh, you know, our receivers, I thought, improved in this game. They made uh, uh, some good catches. And, but it, it's, it's going to take a balanced attack, Jim. But I we do have to run the football. Right, and I think it's going to be huge, too. I think it's going to be great that you've got a win under your belt, and there's some confidence back. There's some of that, that old swagger kind of coming back after the Notre Dame victory. Well, I think, I think more than anything, it's morale. Right. I mean, you know, coming off a win, confidence you morale feel better. Yeah, you same. know, I mean, you're excited to practice. You're excited to study the film because uh, you've had some success. You, you've... Uh, handle some disappointments. I mean, there's there's plenty of opportunities here for us if we can continue to get better. Well, the Wolverines will continue to get better, we hope. Make sure you're here to watch it all. Michigan, Penn State, next week on Michigan Re Replay, right here. Michigan.